How does somebody go from small town Oregon to being a line producer on one of the longest running shows in television, Shark Tank? Today, we're going to talk about his story. This is Financially Fit with Coach Hill, the podcast dedicated to helping you master your finances by coaching you to train your money like a pro athlete trains for success. I'm Coach Hill, your go-to personal finance expert and money coach to the NFL. I help you get financially fit, take control of your money, and achieve your financial goals. Between practical life skills that we provide on this podcast to expert interviews, we dive into all things money, business, wealth, entrepreneurship, and how you can learn those skills to achieve financial freedom. Today, my guest is Andrew Daly. He is the executive line producer for Shark Tank, one of the longest running shows on television. He's a screenwriter. He's an author. He's an entrepreneur. He speaks multiple languages, and he is a world traveler. I'm so excited to introduce you guys to a personal friend of mine that actually went to high school with me to now one of the OGs in the space. Y'all welcome Andrew Daly. Hello, everyone. Hey, Hillary. Thanks for having me. It's such an honor. Yeah, we've been friends for such a long time, and it's cool seeing your progress and the goals that you've set and constantly accomplishing those and setting others. It's huge inspiration for me. Aw, thank you. I just love you. Okay. So let's, let's let the people know that we go all the way back to freshman year of high school. Um, and yeah. let, let's maybe not say the year cause it's gonna, we're gonna, we're a little old now, <laughs> like almost 20 years ago. Let's put it that way. Almost 20 years ago. Um, Take me through, because we've known each other a long time, I know your whole story, but take me through how you ended up on Shark Tank as a production manager, which is a really big deal because that is a show that has been, it's one of the longest running shows currently on television. Um, So that's one really big, but how did you get there from our small, tiny little farm town in Gresham, Oregon to big man LA? Yeah, high school in in boring Oregon. It's, it, yeah, it's kind of a random journey. Um, Shark Tank is a cool show because everyone's heard of it. Everyone likes it, you know, whether it's your kids or your grandmother, everyone's seen it and asked the same questions. How's Mark Cuban? How's <laughs> Kevin O'Leary? Is he really mean? Um, yeah, I never had an interest in film or television. I never had a, like, Growing up, once I turned 18, never even had a TV in my house. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, didn't grow up watching films or anything like that. I think the main thing is I just, I, I was a manager at every job that I ever had. And I am obsessive in my work, te- work style. And yeah. so I think that's um, really rewarded in this industry. And I just got bored, um, bored of the nine to five. And, you know, going from job to job and just waiting for that two weeks of vacation Mm. and not being able, there's a cap, you know, you can only work 40 hours. You can only put in so much effort. And I got bored with the monotony of that. And I just had the random thought that, oh, maybe production, maybe TV production is the one thing that can like hold my interest. And so I just decided to make that leap. And I was working at Home Depot at the time. I was a manager over the front end. So I was in charge of all the cashiers, customer service returns. And I was flipping a house in Gresham, Oregon, just east of Portland. And so I saved up enough money where I didn't have to work for a year rather than a lot of people come here and have difficulties with money and having to work, uh, you know, in the service industry and to have the flexibility to act or go to auditions or, work on a work on a show and I had money saved so I could just kind of go for it hundred percent. And I love that you did that. You saved, I, I remember, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you work at Dairy Queen when we were in high school? Yeah, that was my first job. Ah, that's right. Cause I remember going to get my blizzard through the drive through. So terrible. <laughs> like this really takes us back. This shows people just how long we've been friends and who would have thought we ended up where we ended up. Right. I would never have guessed I would be where I am. I would probably never have guessed any of us landed where we landed. Um, but your journey right. with how you, you're just intrinsically motivated. That's what I want to touch on. You're intrinsically motivated. You've always been very good at what you do. You stick with it. You put in a hundred percent effort every single day, no holds bar. And you ended up down in LA. So you end up working as you weren't a production manager right out of the gate. That was obviously over time. You started working on Shark Tank, but that also led to some other endeavors for you, including screenwriting and writing a graphic novel. So how did 
changing your complete managerial job at Home Depot to trucking down to LA to being on Shark Tank to writing screenplays. Like, take me through how you ended up there. Yeah. So uh, as far as the transition into LA, I was actually doing three things at the same time. So I was flipping a house, working full time at Home Depot and volunteering at a church. So my childhood Mm -hmm. pastor had started a church and he had been an important part of my life growing up. Uh, never, you know, I was kind of a bad kid and got into some trouble and he never judged me and was always there for me. So I wanted to do something to be there for him. Uh, so I contributed through, you know, music, administrative, setting up chairs, anything that I could do to help him. I committed to one year. And so at that end of that one year, uh, I'm like, okay, I fulfilled my commitment. I'm moving to Los Angeles. And he's like, you know, my sister who you met during Christmas is the vice president of Sony. And I'm like, what's Sony? And I thought Sony was like headphones and music. And he's like, oh, no, it's a studio where they like film stuff. And I'm like, oh, cool. He's like, I'll set you up with a meeting if you want when you get there. So a weekend in LA, I had a meeting with the vice president of Sony Pictures. And she walked me through all the sets like, oh, this is where The Wizard of Oz was filmed. This is the Ray Donovan set. Want to go in? And she helped me with my resume and um, set, explain to me, here's film, here's television, here's scripted, here's non-scripted here's the creative, here's the administrative, here's what you would be good at. So go in this direction. And then you can jump over anytime to the creative. If you follow the production management and follow the money, you understand the logistics and how to actually execute and produce a show. Then from there, you can transition to creative anytime you want. Mm -hmm. So the first year was very difficult getting into it. I probably worked 50 days out of the first year. And most of that was... 40 of those were Shark Tank. Yeah. And I, I worked a day on the Queen Latifah show. Um, I, I worked just like a game show, you know, a couple mm-hmm. other like small things. Um, Cause it's very, it was very difficult, especially at the time there was not as much content as there is now mm-hmm. uh, to get in the door. And so everything kind of led from Shark, from Shark Tank. Right. And um, I just started writing kind of as a, hobby curiosity i guess and uh, since then i've written 18 scripts uh pilots um Mm -hmm. of like the first episode of the tv show so you create here's the seed that's going to grow into this tree um and you know put all the dna into that and so developing my craft over time and eventually i never took myself seriously as a writer either but eventually it came to the point where i'm like oh i'm actually pretty good at this you know and kept showing my work to more and more important people and getting feedback and then realizing I was doing something wrong for all the last seven scripts and I need to correct that and then keep finding things that I'm doing wrong and then finally got the point where I'm like oh I'm not making these same mistakes anymore and then started meeting some people through the production management line and through you just being in the industry you meet people who know people and have the connections. And uh, so I've had uh, three scripts that have been close to selling, but just haven't been the right thing at the right time, but people are responding positively to my writing. It'll hit, I know it's gonna hit. I've read a few of your scripts because you were kind enough to let me let me in on that. And um, amazing, the fact that you can go and produce a show that everybody knows and then find time to travel, which we'll talk about and write scripts and, and, and is, I mean, inspirational, remarkable. And I know part of the way you do this and I kind of want to hit on it is your habits. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen your, I've seen your habits when you're scripting, I've seen your board and what I'd love for you to explain what it looks like for you when you're ready to write a script. Like what does your day look like? How do your habits impact what you're able to write and how you're able to write. Because I know that's a big piece of it. So I'd love for you to dig into your habits. Yeah, I can definitely come at that from a financial like standpoint as well mm-hmm. and, and tie that oh. in because I'm very one track mind. I'm very obsessive. So when I'm doing something, it's all or nothing. And I think it's that ADD thing <laughs> that I have. This that's the ability to really hyper focus if you if you train that skill. And so when I'm working on a show, I'm all logistics, 100%. I'm not, my creative mind is completely shut off, completely logistics. And then, so for me, like time is the most valuable resource that I have. And, yeah. and you know, they say time is money. 
but I kind of look at it the other direction, not like, oh, my time, try to accumulate my resources with by working as hard as I can, as long as I can. I actually try to transition that to buy my time. So buy mm-hmm. myself free time to experience growth in my life. And so I'm very careful with my money and how I, I save and, you know, don't excessively spend in order so I have the, the time where I don't need to work all the time. So I can allocate that time because I need that time in order to be creative, to have my mind a hundred percent on writing. And so, Mm -hmm. so that's the first thing that I just take, um, you know, allocate time and give myself time to do nothing, to think, to meditate, to, uh, you know, marinate on the story. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's, that's the first step of it. And then I go through the logistics of actually like mapping out when, when I, have that creative inspiration which is your storyboard which i've seen with all your sticky notes and like all your note cards and yeah it's like a psychopath wall <laughs> it's great i love it 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 it's our pro- everybody has a different process right they have a different way that they focus how they focus but mm-hmm. high performers always harness their ability to focus in different ways and i know that you do that through being able to compartmentalize when i'm working on shark tank i'm working on shark tank and i'm working on the budget and running the show but when i'm home and I have three months because you guys don't work every day and you don't have a nine to five and you're not employed 365. It's, you know, you get six months and then you have six months of free time that you have to fill. And part of that is your creative mind. So knowing that you're able to do that, I want to transition into the financial side of not working all the time, because a lot of people think that people in production studios are working 24 seven. And the reality is Shark Tank runs what five six months out of the year. Yes, yeah, so it's a it's a five, five six month commitment for me. Yeah, and then you have six months of time to fill, and that's where you are doing things like didn't you do Miss Universe in Thailand? Yeah, I did that. Uh, I spent about a month and a half in Thailand working on I mean, season sixty seven cool or something. Yeah, that was a good experience. I bet. Uh, yeah, so so Shark Tank is I, I've stepped away from shark tank several times and get from you know i followed that production management route shark tank has been a lot of my promotions because they train internally and they're they're really solid you know quality show that keeps coming back with good people good management and so i received a lot of good mentorship through there but also i had a good boss who was very kind and very Mm-hmm. Um, just supportive of me and the things that I want to do because he knows that I want to ultimately run, create and run my own shows scripted. Yeah. So I've stepped away to I stepped away to do try digital and launched uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's YouTube channel. I stepped away to try scripted for a little bit, and so I did uh, Doctor Ken with Ken Jong mm-hmm. and uh, the Sony uh, production and blunt talk with Patrick Stewart. But then I just keep kept coming back to Shark Tank. And a lot of times, you know, getting promoted, come back with a promotion. And so Shark Tank has kind of been like the staple go to show that I keep coming back to it's hard to get away. <laughs> and it's because you're good. And, yeah, and and it's good people. And so it's, it's enjoyable to come back to as well. And So over time, you know, now it's kind of become my staple where I'm decided to become, you know, consistent on there as production manager, uh, coming back year after year. And that consumes uh, six months of my year. And then I have an opportunity to either, you know, travel or pursue my creative endeavors or pick up, you know, miscellaneous smaller jobs here and there. Um, and right I now just, you are currently sitting in Mexico city. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, excuse if there's any like, uh, you know, Spanish shouting outside or sirens in, in the streets. It's, it's a you noisy spend city. a lot of your time in Mexico. So you split time between Mexico and the U S and that's, that fuels some of your travel. Cause you're the Renaissance guy that travels. You speak Spanish, you speak English. You're almost fluent in Spanish. You won't, you won't claim that, but I know you are. Um, Cause I know how many classes you've taken and the fact that you've immersed yourself in the culture um, and you've done documentaries in Mexico, some very sketchy places that you've been also in South America. Um, so you've kind of seen 
a little bit of the world, a lot of the world. You've traveled a ton through production. And then yeah. that has led to screenwriting. But then you wrote a book, La Entrada. Talk to me about your book, what inspired it. I know there's you love the true Mexican culture, the, the entire continent. Um, well, I shouldn't say continent, country. It's part of the North American continent. But the country of Mexico you love. And you wrote a book inspired by it. Can you fill me in on that? Yeah, I do love it here. Uh, that kind of came from... Uh, an opportunity to meet the owners of the company who produced Selena, the TV show mm -hmm. based on the singer in Mexico. And so for me, it was kind of just a throwaway thing. And for fun, I wanted to actually, I, I've written 18 scripts now. So it's, it's <laughs> to the point where it's hard to get family and friends. You've been very kind and gracious to read my scripts, Always. but not a lot of people do. And so not a lot of people can see the work that I've done. And so that was kind of uh, just a, a side project that didn't work out that I turned into a graphic novel partner with an artist and had that produced so people could actually like see something physically that I had created. So it was more for fun than anything else, but uh, it kind of captures, yeah, my love of Mexico and uh, Mexican culture. Yeah. And I, I will link the book so you guys can go buy it on Amazon. Um, I own it. I read it. It's the day it came out. I got it. And it's a graphic novel. So it's easy. It's fun to get through. It's a fantastic storyline. And it came from, like Andrew was saying, a script that he wrote. So um, it gives you kind of some insight into that process and what that looks like. And your your world is unique. I mean, what you do, most people only dream of or, or barely understand, you know, what does production look like? What does TV look like? But what it comes down to, and a lot of the reasons people get out of it is because they are not financially stable enough to not work 365. So I want to dive into, and we've talked about this many times because yeah. I will go down to LA and we will go watch hockey games because that's our thing. And I love it. Or um, meet in Vegas or, or Vegas or you know, wherever we want to meet for a hockey game. Because although I work with the NFL guys, hockey's must work. Like we love that. We've been doing this for years. And every time I take Andrew to a game, side note, every time I take Andrew to a game, the Dallas Scar Stars, which is my team, scores a hat trick. So we've had three hat tricks since I've taken him to three games, which is unbelievable. So let's not jinx it next yeah. game. We're going to get I mean, someone else who scores three goals, which is a hat trick in hockey. Um, hat trick daily, I guess. Yeah, you are. And I remember when I made you go get a hat and you were literally walking down the aisle. I'm like, throw it. Jamie Ben just scored the third goal. Throw it. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, we've had, we've had some great times, but LA is an expensive place to live. And when I come visit you, we always talk about the financial implications of working in TV and you technically are an entrepreneur as a screenwriter and you are in control of your schedule quite frequently. How do you stay financially fit? as somebody who doesn't have a consistent stream of revenue every single day, 365. Yeah, I do a yearly budget and review that every time that I do my taxes. Mm -hmm. So I, I go through all my credit card statements, my bank statements and see, you know, what I'm spending in every area and see if there's any ways that I can reduce or have been frivolous in my spending. Yeah. And then uh, kind of get an idea of what I spend for the year and then make sure that I have enough for um, for savings, for my Roth IRA and for my adventures. I and um, so I don't have to be as careful with my finances as I was when I when I started out. Yeah. Um, or when I was saving for LA, I was pretty much eating, you know, rice and beans and, you know, saving up so I could buy a house so I could in, flip the house and, and in, invest in, you know, renovating it. Um, I don't know. I've always been careful with my money. I think when I was, when I was younger, I got into a little bit of debt mm -hmm. and I had car payments and rent and I was, just spending too much on groceries and beer mm -hmm. and got into debt and had to borrow, uh, not that much money. Uh, but it was kind of a big humbling experience for me to have to borrow money from my parents. And mm -hmm. my mom sat me down and she's like, okay, if you're, you're going to borrow some money, you're going to make a budget. <laughs> and I had never, you know, thought about money too much. And so just the effect of like, 
knowing where you're at and measuring it, I think mm -hmm. is, is so powerful. Just you subconsciously think when you spend, if you've had to recall every dollar at that, you know, at the end of the yeah. year of how much you spent last year and see, Oh man, I go out to eat so much. I spend mm -hmm. so much on alcohol and cigarettes back then, you know, yeah. these things that I didn't need. And so since then I, was very conscientious about my spending and making a budget and I didn't want to have to do that again. Yeah. And so it was a great experience in my life that Im improved me and made me more conscientious about my spending. Yeah. But and it also translates to shark tank because as a production manager, you manage the budget for the show. Yeah. It's definitely in, in production. It kind of, there, there's kind of a backfire effect though. Cause w when you're dealing with millions of dollars, and spending like, oh, $1,000 on this, $20,000 on this, $500,000 on this video truck. Your own money is like, oh, what's it? All uh, right. You know, like, what's a hundred dollars? I'm like, well, wait, I am not a TV show. I do I am not, not a make family. millions of dollars. I need to reel this back in a little bit. <laughs> right. Well, I like that you look at it annually because a lot of us look at it monthly. We don't look at what we spend per annum per year. And if yeah. you look at how much you spend in a year, people would be like, how did I spend 70, 80, $90,000? And I'm still racking up credit card debt. When you look at it monthly, it's a little easier to digest. When you look at it yearly, totally different. It completely change, changes your mindset on how you're spending. So I love that you do that. Yeah, I, I do have to. Oh, go ahead. I, I have to do it yearly. Because in production, I'm an independent contractor. So mm -hmm. even though right now, like Shark Tank is very consistent for me, it has never been in the past consistent for me. So I never know. It's like being in Los Angeles is in, in the film industry is getting comfortable with the feeling of falling because you never know when the next job is going to come. And I've come to the point where it's consistent enough. I know that I can find work if I need it. And I know I generally spend about or make about so much money or spend about so much money. And so... It, it's just practical for my industry to do it in a yearly. Yeah. Setting. Because of how you're paid. You're, yeah. you're not a W2 employee. They're not taking taxes out for you. They're giving you a check and you have to do all of it, which yeah. in essence is entrepreneurship. And a lot of us who are entrepreneurs look at that and go, Oh, I'd rather have that level of control. And for some people that level of control is scary because it requires a little more discipline, a little more responsibility. Yeah. Uh, but I love that you look at it annually. And that is something that, if you're not good at budgeting, if it's easier to look at big picture, annual is great. It's another way to look at your money to see if it works for your style and how you how you actually want to handle money. And a lot yeah. of us realize or don't realize there's multiple ways to do it. Yeah, it's so much less stress, though. Um, living below your means, setting money aside, mm -hmm. knowing that you can get through a hard situation, a storm, a being sick. You know, oh, yeah. things that come up, a job that doesn't come through, yeah. that you have money, you're ahead of the curve, and you have that security ahead of you. It's, Absolutely. And not well, having I have two questions that we have to cover because you know people want to know this. Do you have a favorite Shark Tank episode? Um, I like a lot of season six. Okay. Um, and we're on, what, season 15 now? Yeah, something crazy. Season six was when I was in the art department. So oh. now a lot of the times I don't even know what the entrepreneurs are or watch <laughs> any of the pitches. I'm so, you know, on phone calls and text yeah. messages and emails and running around, you know, putting out fires and solving problems. So I don't see a lot of the pitches. My um, favorite one for experience was... Uh, two seasons ago when we did a Shark Tank Live. It Ooh. didn't get, not a lot of people liked it, didn't get a lot of good viewer reviews, but it was oh, a no. good experience for me. And and we had a lot of fun as a crew uh, pulling it off in like a short amount of time. And so that was my favorite personally. Um, as far as in watching it, I do like a lot of season six because I started out on the art department rather than in the yeah. production logistics and I got to help like set up all the displays and meet all the entrepreneurs oh, and cool. be right there on set watching everything. Um, Instead of high level overview, you were like in it, working it, getting to know these people. That's fun. 
Yeah, I guess I'll have to go back and watch season six. Yeah, it was a, it was a good season. Okay. I mean, you didn't know that I arranged some of those displays. Look at you, fancy. I'd have been lost. I've been like, I am a numbers person. Don't ask me to get creative. It's not going to happen. No, nope, black and white over here. Um, all right. Ending all of this, because I mean, I we could talk about this stuff all day long, and I love it. But I also want to be respectful of everyone's time. I always end with one question, which is, what do you do to stay financially fit? What is your one money hack, your one thing the one financial tip that you would give anybody that has helped you stay financially fit in life as an entrepreneur, as someone in TV production. Uh, use credit cards wisely. I mm, think I, I as, as you know, my, my family lives in Portland. I'm in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. It's just a quick flight away. I, in the last 10 years, I've never paid for a flight other than, you know, taxes and fees uh, to Portland to see my family. I just yep. use credit credit cards and pay that off. I have the app, so I pay probably twice a month just to make sure I never have any interest that I'm paying yep. and get to fly for free pretty much just to see my family in Portland. I love that. That's one of my favorite money hacks is traveling using your points so you don't pay for flights. Because if you have to buy stuff, you might as well get something for it and then get your free flight. Yeah, let everyone else's debt pay for pay for your flights. Yes, and we all have to spend money to live. We have food, we have insurance, we have our cell phone bills, we have to pay for net. Okay, we don't have to pay for Netflix, but we choose mm -hmm. to pay for Netflix. And if you put all of those bills on a credit card and rack up those miles, you're flying for free for the things that you must pay for just to live. So it's a nice little money hack. It's one of my favorites. I love that that's one of yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing your journey. And I mean, thinking from small town to production manager of Shark Tank, and we are 36, 37 years old, we're under 40. That's a big accomplishment. And I don't think people realize the amount of work it takes, but I'm glad you were able to share your story, share what you do and how you do it. And now everyone needs to just go rewatch Shark Tank. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's been <laughs> a lot of hard work and a lot of luck. Appreciate you, friend. Thank you. Bye.